Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining UICC for this Treatment for All webinar. Uh, this is Michaela Newman, the Advocacy Manager at UICC Speaking Now, and uh, we are very glad to be presenting Treatment for All to you today. Um, just as a quick note at the beginning, uh, we've, we've muted everyone who's on um, the phone for the time being, but there will be time for questions later. And this webinar will be recorded for your viewing at a later time as well. So today there are three of us presenting to you, um, myself, uh, Dr. Julie Tarode, uh, Deputy CEO and Director of Advocacy and Networks here, as well as Natalie Hassler, Communications and Social Media Manager at UICC. And today we'll be introducing Treatment, to, uh, treatment for All to you, as well as uh, going over ways that you can get involved. And then after a pause for questions and answers, we will look at some of the campaign materials that we launched a few weeks ago on World Cancer Day as a way to already start generating the discourse around treatment for all and hearing from you right away. So to begin, I will first hand over to Julie and we can get going from there. Thank you very much, Michaela. I will move to the next slide. So many of you that work on uh, global advocacy with the UICC team are very familiar with this story. Um, but I think to provide some context to why Treatment for All Now, um, I'll just give a quick recap for those that maybe are, are, are newer to this global stage. Um, we've been working over the last six years to really lift the cancer story onto the global health and development agenda. And back in 2009, we had two goals. One, it was to have the high-level meeting uh, in New York um, with heads of state discussing the topic of non-communicable diseases. And the second was to make sure that whatever replaced the Millennium Development Goals in 2015 included non-communicable diseases. Um, so you'll be pleased to see that this timeline starts in 2011 with the high-level meeting that we were successful in pushing for, and that gave a great start to the impetus on NCDs globally. Um, that led to a global accountability framework with great targets and indicators, and particularly the target for 2025, which is what we're really now working towards, of 25% reduction in premature mortality due to NCDs by 2025. Um, that, that included a set of targets, and importantly for us, we were able to include, in addition to the prevention and risk factor targets, also a health systems target, and that is the 80% uh, availability of essential medicines and technologies. And why is that so critical? Because we felt that we needed the, the health systems response embedded in that global action plan. And since that time point, we've really been working forward to make sure that the guidance for cancer from the WHO side is as strong as it can be. Um, so you may be aware that in 2015 and subsequently, we've been working with WHO to make sure that the model essential medicines list is both current uh, and relevant for cancer control planning. And this May, um, WHO also launched their priority recommendations for cancer technologies, which is the first time that advice in this direction has been provided. Um, so we've been working towards um, um, you know, the, the right advice for national action, and particularly in 2015, the cancer resolution has really pulled all of those steps and progress uh, markers um, at the global level together, like the uh, cancer resolution, the resolution on surgery, palliative care, into one cancer resolution that we had um, successfully approved by all member states. So all of our countries have signed up to that um, in May last year. Um, so our question is, where do we go next? Um, we're aiming for 2025, and this is why we're focusing on treatment for all as our story as a hard push to, to that, that, that milestone in just a few years' time. 2018 is a critical year for the NCD agenda. I'm sure most of you already know that the UN high-level meeting on NCDs will be the first time where there's a comprehensive report back 
to the UN at heads of state level. So it's quite a critical opportunity to show the progress on cancer thus far, but also to push for action where we know um, there will be real impact for, for, for cancer patients, which is um, reducing that premature mortality target. So if we move on to the next slide, um, you know, the cancer resolution for us is a key document um, which is really showing the emphasis that member states now should increase efforts to strengthen the health systems at the national and local levels to ensure early diagnosis accessible, is accessible, affordable and high quality for all cancer patients. And we know early diagnosis must be connected to treatment. So um, we won't dwell on the document, but we'll, we will be um, coming back to some key tools that help link all of those um, recommendations and advice together, and Michaela will be walking through that later in this presentation. So moving to the next slide, oops, I've gone too far. Moving to the next slide, um, you know, one of the key things um, why we're focusing on treatment for all as well is to really address the equity divide, both the equity divide globally but also nationally. Um, the cancer resolution for the very first time actually underscores that cancer is the second leading cause of death annually worldwide. This is the first time that WHO has made such a strong statement. It's also a leading cause of morbidity. Um, so, you know, the quality of life of, of people living with cancer is very much in focus in the cancer resolution, again, really for the first time. Um, we know, and many of you are very aware of this, that 65% of all cancer deaths occur in low middle income countries. And I think that's still something that many people don't understand. And when we focus on the premature deaths due to NCDs and cancer, that goes up to 75% already before we look at the frightening projection that you see on the right hand side of this slide looking at how, how the, both the incidence and mortality will be increasing rapidly over the next few years and we know it's set to rise most in those same lower middle income countries. Um, so you know, one of the key things that got heads of state, finance ministers, the, the real decision makers in government focused on NCDs was the economic argument um, and we do reflect in the council resolution around that issue, particularly focusing on the cost of um, cancer to the community and currently estimates suggest that $1.6 trillion are spent annually just on treating and managing cancer. So we need to get that story across that um, by engaging on cancer we're actually also engaging on development and, en and enabling um, countries to continue um, developing on an economic level and keeping their population in work. Um, but importantly, and I think this is very much important for your advocacy, is also to look at inequities within country. You know, many, many of you talk about poor access in your country, but we also know there are specific populations within, um, within um, countries that have poorer access than others. We know that the poor and certain marginalized groups experience inequalities across the spectrum of intervention, whether that's information on risk factors, um, ability to access um, ways to reduce their exposure to risk factors, to access screening or early detection opportunities, to get diagnosis um, as being accurate as early as possible and linking into timely treatment. So of course we can also know that because of all of these challenges, the outcomes for the poor are particularly bad in cancer and I think it's an important aspect to build into your advocacy. Um, at national level. So going back to those global targets I mentioned, here are the, the nine global targets that all of our countries have signed up to. You can see many of those are risk factor oriented, um, but the health systems piece is really about the 80% accessibility in the bottom right corner. The key thing that also happened in May was the update to the Appendix 3 document of the Global Action Plan. Um, we, we pushed very hard as an advocacy community that that document was a live document back in 2013 when it was approved. And it's great to see that WHO has done some very hard work to update that document. And it's also a key, key source for you moving forward. It's got some great new recommendations for priority interventions for cancer on the basis of cost effectiveness. 
Um, and, and importantly, we've highlighted here the um, emphasis on multidisciplinary treatment and the opportunity of, um, of early detection and treatment of key cancers that we know respond to treatment so well, um, those being cervical breast and colorectal cancer, but also references to oral and, uh, cancers and leukemia in that document. And importantly for the area of supportive and palliative care, there's a basic palliative care package for cancer that's also included in that document. So new opportunities, and again, we've built those into the tools that we'll be sharing with you later. So one of the successes of UICC's work at global level is to think about how we work in partnership and building networks and coalitions for success. And I think that's part of how we think treatment for all should be successful in the next few years. So we you would encourage you to think about partnership, not only partnering with us, but thinking about who you can partner with at national level when you take the treatment for all story forward. So let's have a closer look at that treatment for all story. Um, we've kept the story very simple because we think it's a complex area, but in fact, when you're engaging the public, when you're engaging policymakers, you need to keep it very simple. We want to um, encourage engagement on the improving the health system's response for cancer. And we all know that's uh, really down to information, shaping the, the uh, interventions that you want to include in your cancer services, making sure the public is also informed. Um, using that information not only to shape the plans but also to monitor and evaluate over time. Um, importantly for us, as I've mentioned before, early detection, but making sure that's connected with accurate diagnosis, making sure that's connected very much to timely and accurate appropriate treatment, and making sure that that's also connected to supportive and palliative care, knowing that um, that's, it, that's an integral part of all, all treatment um, as early as possible. But the focus of Treatment for All is on that global target that we've all signed off on. And what does that mean for cancer? That means reducing the 4.3 million premature tests, deaths due to cancer worldwide every year. So we are encouraging the Treatment for All approach to really target um, reduction in premature deaths. I keep pressing the wrong number um, to move the slides. Ah. So let me uh, give you a, a very high level introduction of what the campaign would look like from, from um, UICC Geneva team perspective. We're seeing this um, as three work streams. Um, to, so we're still making sure we continue to work in the global health space and particularly the development space. Um, so work stream one is working with our, our partners in the NCD community, but also um, driving the cancer story forward in the further discussions as we focus on moving towards the sustainable development goals in 2030, and particularly the conversations around universal health coverage and how does cancer fit in there. But importantly for us all, I think that uh, the other side of that coin is how is this going to be financed and finding new and innovative ways of financing cancer services. So it's an important area and we'll be looking towards our members to help make that um, most, most relevant and, and useful at a country level. And also sharing the great progress that you have made in that area so that we have a positive story for, for cancer when we, when we have those uh, meetings at global level. The second work stream um, is to look at the global activation. And what we mean by that is really to take, you know, take the story of the cancer resolution and translate that into really meaningful work for helping shape national action. And particularly in the cancer resolution, we have a couple of areas where WHO has committed to do work on behalf of our governments. One of those is to um, develop a, a global report on cancer. This will be uh, as an action-oriented um, strategic document to help drive implementation. And we've already done one webinar on that to start to inform our members. I recommend you have a look at that if you haven't seen it. We do have the recording there. And we'll be doing some regular updates on that. On, on how you can get involved and use your, your, your experience in country to help shape that document, how you can add in some great case studies to make it real and relevant to show that, 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 that work can be done, 
but also how you can get involved in promoting that report and promoting use of that report both regionally and nationally. Another area where we'll be working is on the, um, the need for a um, cancer planning cost, costing tool to really plan out your cancer services, weigh up scenarios and make the right choices. I mean, this is really based on the fact that we know many governments are investing in cancer, um, but are maybe making some poor choices and making, uh, you know, spending in, in areas that aren't having the impact that we need. So this costing tool will be quite critical for national use, but also help shape a cancer investment story at that global level. Um, so those, those are the types of things we'll be working with WHO on and we'll be engaging you as a membership to make sure you can keep up with what's happening there and how you can help make sure that those tools are really as relevant and meaningful for, for national action as possible. The third work stream is what we're calling uh, national activation, and this is really working with you at country level. You know, we think there's been a great dialogue at global level, great commitments at global level, but how do we actually get that translating into action in your countries at grassroots level? And we know that many of you are great advocates nationally and, and don't need so much of our help, um, so we're encouraging you just to pick up the treatment for all story and use it in your own advocacy. But many of our members in lower and middle income settings don't have the breadth of um, capacity, expertise to do such uh, you know, big, big advocacy campaigns. So the idea is to really try and help, help, help those uh, members take this forward as a, long, you know, a sustained um, advocacy effort. This type of health system response and strengthening won't happen overnight. We need to work over several years and a consistent manner in partnership with, with our governments to really make this work. And so we're, we're really looking forward to working with members to make um, you know, what we can do to help you make that as uh, um, effective as possible. So let's have a quick look at, at our high-level plans for that. We're still in a, in a forming phase at the moment, so it's very high level. But just to give you uh, a perspective here, this is our campaign vision. 2018 is very much a preparatory phase. Um, we're looking to identify um, three countries where we have strong UICC members to work through some of the ideas and really from our perspective work out how we can add value from the Geneva team side, but also check and challenge some of the ideas we have for a co content of a virtual course. Um, some supporting toolkits and materials that might be useful so that we have some uh, work with, with members working uh, in country to, see, to make sure they're really, really useful and the right things um, that could help um, many more members. So we're keen to um, get that moving um, and we're also keen to recruit mentors from different organizations, um, cancer societies that maybe campaign already in these areas to share their expertise or topic specific experts to help uh, really enrich those toolkits um, and, and, and improve the knowledge base of our members to be better advocates um, as they get into the details of um, implementation in, in their own countries. So it's a very early time at the moment and I'm going to hand over to Michaela in, in a moment to, to talk through how you can help shape that in different ways in 2018. Um, but what we'll be looking for is to um, develop this virtual course, have a clear idea of the, the basic modules or syllabus of this course to share with um, members at the World Cancer Congress in 2018. And we'd also be launching, ideally at that time, the, the way that members in low middle income countries could apply to be part of this first course. So there'll be a call for expressions of interest at the World Cancer Congress. The idea is that then we'll be able to select up to 20 countries to uh, be involved in that first wave of, of the course through 2019. And our ambition is to launch that by World Cancer Day, use the months um, leading up to the World Cancer Leaders Summit in 2019 to conduct that virtual course um, and then have a, an in-person workshop to really in, um, develop those campaigns together um, in a network um, in person. So let me just take you through the high-level vision 
for the course. Again, still quite a high level um, piece, but I think it gives you a flavor of where we're going. The first part will be to look at where, where are, are you as a country, um, complete a local landscaping and analysis. So what's the status of the cancer plan in, in the country? Where is the cancer registry? What type of data is it already providing? Who are the stakeholders and, and potential allies to unite behind this treatment for all story as we take it forward? Um, that will lead to a, 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 an analysis phase of looking at so that's, that's nice in theory, but what is going on in the country? What is the extent of cancer services? How well established are early detection activities? How well are referral pathways working or not working? Uh, where are the treatment centers in the country? Um, and are, you know, are they working and able to diagnose the cancers that are imminently treatable? Is the treatment available uh, for those cancers? And is there a, a, a palliative and supportive care services in place? Um, this will uh, enable us to go through almost like a prioritization process um, to uh, identify strengths and weaknesses at country level, identify gaps, and therefore sh shape the campaign very much tailored on what is the next step for the country, um, and, and, and therefore making your advocacy campaign very targeted on what needs to happen next, rather than longer term visioning. Out of that process, we hope then to help shape um, national campaigns led by members um, in, in those countries. Um, and we're looking to provide discussion for uh, supplementary material, maybe an expert help desk, um, as well as organizational mentorship to help develop the campaign, but also to support through the implementation phase and, and helping sustain campaigns over time. So what, what we're really seeing is those, these campaigns have to be you know, a three, four year plan in partnership with government. These aren't gonna work in, in, in a few months uh, uh, advocacy, you know, we need to work over many years and, and modulate the story, like keep persisting um, as civil society. So I think one of our visions really is to create um, you know, a mobilized cancer community that's all pushing in the, right di in the same direction behind the treatment for all story so that we really can get governments to take action rather than sitting back and hoping for some big solution in, in the next few years. We know it's gonna be hard work, um, but that's what we're here for, to make sure that we really can Im impact cancer outcomes by 2025. So that's the top line story, and I will hand over to Michaela with uh, maybe um, a question on my side, Michaela, to maybe explain to people how you see um, this treatment for all um, global campaign linking in with some of the tools that we already have um, shared at, um, uh, on World Cancer Day and how you see the global story around treatment for all really help support the, the national work moving forward. Thank you, Julie. Uh, so we'll definitely be looking at the uh, communication tools that were released on World Cancer Day here in a minute, but one of the first things that you can do um, to get involved in the shaping and the kind of co-ownership and co-creation um, of linking and translating the global story to the national work is by um, serving on the advisory group that we would like to kick off this year. So uh, this, this will be a group of that are committed to treatment for all that would like to work with us to better understand how to draw from the global story learnings that can be used to really support some of our members uh, on the ground in shaping their national treatment for all campaigns. And uh, we really, really believe that this is something that we need to do together and where there are gaps in our knowledge that there will be, um, these will be strengths and with other organizations. And this is a, a great opportunity to come together and unite behind the same message for the same impact against these targets we've all committed to. But we understand that this will be done in different ways based on, on, on the environment in which we all live and work and and um, fight for our health. So under this advisory group, we're really seeking to have some member-led working groups which will help us shape what treatment for all will mean and really, really allow us to support um, you know, a core set of our members who are willing to be leaders in treatment for all. Uh, again, while we 
believe this is something that we can all participate in. Um, this will also require there, there to be some champions who are really, really willing to mobilize and lead what Treatment for All could look like across the world. So one of these working groups is around our course and our toolkit. Uh, as mentioned by Julie, we would like to have these tools available next year, both a virtual and in-person course. Um, that will allow some of these committed members to really prepare themselves and, and um, review their, their plans and policies so as to prioritize their um, asks for a National Treatment for All campaign, and the tools that will help them get there through these global learnings uh, and, and what's already been done before. We, we do not need to reinvent the wheel. But what resources might you have that you can contribute to this working group that we can use and, and, and really um, spread and share best practice and lessons learned from the work that we've already done? So in this working group, we really see members um, providing materials or working with us to identify gaps where there aren't any existing resources that really, really hit on what it is that we're trying to achieve and what needs to be done in order to create these tools and to embed them in this training. Another working group is around the mentorship concepts that we're very excited about for Treatment for All because it's a, it's a proven learning method and it really, really allows leaders of the cancer community to share their, their um, best practice and to share what it is that they do that works so well to enable more and more uh, cancer societies, patient groups, other civil society groups to get in, involved. And um, uh, especially with younger organizations in different parts of the world with different obstacles, these learnings could be very, very helpful. So we'd love to see people um, coming together in this working group to define what a mentorship program could look like to support the development of treatment for all across different countries. Another working group that we're considering is around cause-based coalition building. We know to, to really make an impact, we need to mobilize a group of people behind the same purpose. And we think that, that as mentioned, the simple message of improved and access to data, early detection, treatment, and care is a message that the cancer community can get behind to reach these global targets. But how do you gather people? We have um, some excellent, excellent members at UICC who have managed to do this in their countries, and we really, really want to hear from you to see, again, how we can extrapolate those learnings and share them with other uh, organizations that are eager to bring more and more people together who share the same goal to improve access to cancer treatment and care. And finally, another working group that we are looking at is uh, again, the name I need to change because I believe it's uh, owned, but um, what Choose Wildly Working Group. So while there is no one-size-fits-all approach for our members and within countries, what is a basic set of minimum requirements that many share and see as they look to identify priorities in their country? And how can we start to build those in to the existing tools and materials we have and into professional and other types of training so that we really make sure that we cover our basics together and, and achieve this, this, these, well, these very big goals that we committed to quite a few years ago to achieving in 2025. So at this point, um, we are right at the halfway mark, which is great. We can pause and hear from you guys about what you think about treatment for all and what Julie has introduced this afternoon. And um, so I'll be unmuting the, the call. Uh, please let us know what you think. Um, if you do not have a question to ask at this time, remain muted if possible. The conference has been unmuted. Are there any questions at this time? All right. It doesn't look like there are any questions at the moment. So we can... Yeah, uh, we can hear some talking in the background, but if you don't have a direct question, I mean, maybe may just to refer to a question that came up this morning 
um, yeah, one one of the motivations for us, um, and we will explain this in the next segment. Is, um, UICC has been doing some reviews of, of cancer plans, um, and we have the ambition, in fact, of reviewing all of the cancer plans in the public domain over the next uh, few weeks. And one of the things that's been apparent in, in the reviews that I've personally been doing is that you know, many cancer plans don't have robust targets and certainly not indicators um, against a lot of the work. And these don't connect to the global story, even if there are indicators. So I think there's a missed opportunity there, and that could also be part of our advocacy um, so I think some of the, the, the tools that we shared on, on, on World Cancer Day are really trying to help um, the advocacy community in the, cancer, in the cancer world to try and connect all of those global documents and try and use those more in national advocacy. Um, so maybe as we haven't had any questions up to now, maybe Michaela, we could move to the, the introduction of the, the tools that we shared on, on, on World Cancer Day. The conference has been muted. Absolutely. So, um, as a quick introduction of what we'll be discussing now, I'll first change the slide. There we are. So, on February 4th, we launched a set of materials including a one pager, a promoting greater equity world map, an interactive navigator tool, and the social media hub, which includes um, ready made messages in a toolkit and um, visuals. To, to support these messages. So as shown here, we have one pager, which is a bit longer than one page, but uh, covers much of what we've discussed in today's webinar. So you can share this and, and begin to look at it in more detail. Once again, we, we go over kind of the background and why we've come to Treatment for All as our advocacy initiative between now and 2025 in, in order to reach these global targets. And um, uh, again, showcasing the different work streams that, that we will be uh, working in in order to achieve Treatment for All, both globally but also across and within countries. And it also explores you know, why UICC wants to bring value to this process and work um, with our members and with the broader cancer community to achieve treatment for all. So this is available on our website at uicc.org uh, slash treatment for all. And you can download it as a PDF and then share it with others, get the word out. In addition to this, we also launched what we're calling the Promoting Greater Equity World Map. And as you can notice in the title, Treatment for All is really, really about all cancers, all ages, all geographies, all income levels. We want to make sure that everyone can access treatment and care. And with this map, we asked our very global board members um, and, and leaders in the cancer community what inequity looks like in their country and what treatment for all could mean as a response. And what we wanted to do with this is really highlight, again, this, this one-size-fits-all message is not the right one, that different approaches can be taken across different countries to begin to make those united steps towards improving cancer treatment for all in country. So please take a look at our website and you can click on the different locations to see these board members' responses and to better understand, again, how different people have reflected on treatment for all and proposed potential next steps or areas that need to be covered in their countries. Yes, and uh, Michaela, maybe uh, we can just say that we'd really be, uh, appreciate uh, if you would share your own stories and, and reflections on that so we can use those stories in and taking treatment for all forward. So it's great to see our board members and their views, but we, we'd love to see your um, views from, from members around the world. Absolutely, and we also hopefully have the tools to, to enable you to do this. So in addition to the map, we also launched what we're calling the Global Cancer Commitments Navigator. And this is an interactive tool that allows you to explore the linkages between the global commitments that we've adopted and the actions that you can each use to enable this change in the work that you're doing. Uh, and, and as Julie mentioned earlier, this is also a, re a real opportunity to look at how you can 
embed some of the language from these documents into your own cases for support uh, and as a way of measuring impact and indicators in your own work. So this, uh, the foundation of this tool is built on the 2017 Cancer Resolution, the Global Action Plan for Prevention and Control of NCDs, the WHO Best Buys for NCD Prevention and Control, and the Sustainable Development Goals. And the, the six, um, we're calling them levers, that make up the circle are these areas of um, change which you can first click through to then identify the corresponding actions and text in these documents. This builds awareness of the commonalities and understanding of links between the documents and helps to build the foundation of compelling advocacy narratives to support priority intervention implementation. So as a, an example, um, you could look at timely treatment and then click through to an action of delivering multidisciplinary care in order to get the direct text from the relevant document. So this identifies the key clauses from the resolution, the cost-effective recommendations from the WHO Best Buys, and any supporting international goals from the Global Action Plan or the, the Sustainable Development Goals. You can also reverse engineer the Global Cancer Commitments Navigator by instead clicking through on the um, Supporting Global Goals box, which is the blue box identified in the bottom left-hand corner, where you instead might look at Cancer Resolution 1.1 and work back to see how it pertains to um, different areas of, of um, work and, and the, the key levers as we've identified on the outer circle there. So this again kind of allows you to, to either go from the outside in or the inside out to really, really understand these connections and linkages between the global policy and the national action that we hope this, these documents support. So again, this navigator allows you to navigate between the essential global documents using linkages to build compelling arguments for your work. Um, this is, uh, ID, um, I'm sorry, uh, examples of this are in prioritizing evidence-based approaches and a core package of services for impact on patient outcomes, prioritizing cost-effective interventions, integration of cancer control efforts with NCD plans, integration of cancer control efforts with infectious disease, child and maternal health services, and opportunities for a whole of government approach because this um, meaningful collaboration is incredibly important uh, for treatment for all in mobilizing both civil society and government support. So one way you can get involved with, with this already is to, to use the tool and let us know um, whether or not you've used any of these documents to support your activities. Uh, we really, again, want to share best practice and anything that successfully enabled you to do your job um, better at, at pushing for, for this type of change. We're particularly interested in how policy support can drive cancer pathways and services for real improvements in terms of patient outcomes and equity and access. So at this time, I would love to hand over to Natalie to talk you through our social media hub. Thank you, Michaela. So as we are launching this uh, great new campaign and engaging with our membership, we also want to start the, the conversation online using social media. As you may know, uh, social media is a great tool for us, for UICC and our community to uh, raise awareness on specific cancer control issues and to really uh, build the dialogue around it. So we created a social media hub on our website, which is accessible through uicc.org slash treatmentfall. And this will be a living space providing you with all the materials that you will need to join the conversation on social media. So when I say living space, it, it means that it will be uh, updated throughout the year based on the, the milestones that are coming up on the health and NCD and cancer agenda, and that we will provide you with the most up-to-date um, information for, for use on social media. 
So there you can already find the social, a social media toolkit that I will present you in a couple of minutes, um, a series of images for you to use, and uh, some ready-made messages are uh, available on the social media hub if you want to start tweeting already on your own account. So this, the social media toolkit will provide you with a practical, practical information on first how you can connect with UICC if you haven't already. We are quite active on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn, so please uh, get connected with us on those platforms. And it will also provide you information on how you can add your voice to the Treatment for All online conversation. We really want to start uh, create this conversation online, this online conversation, and you unite the cancer community, the health community behind the treatment for all um, messages, key messages, with voices coming uh, from all parts of the world uniting behind a, behind a united share of voice and call for action. You will also find in this, in this social media toolkit how and when you should support the campaign. So as I said, there are a couple of milestones coming up on the health agenda, with the next one being the World Health Day on 7th of April. So the, the theme of the day will be health for all and focusing on the universal health coverage. This is an opportunity for us as well to link the dialogue, um, to include treatment for all in the dialogue of health universal, um, universal health coverage, sorry and to really um, seize the opportunity to communicate and share the campaign priorities. Um, we, we have also um, the World Health Assembly coming in May and uh, the high, uh, high level meeting on NCD later this year. So again, those are opportunities for, for us to reinforce the messages of the campaign and the four pillars that are covered uh, through this new initiative. You will also find in this social media toolkit some tips to use social media for advocacy campaigns. So be it for a treatment for all and also for other um, advocacy campaigns, social media is a great tool to um, raise awareness and also drive uh, impact from um, call for actions coming from online platforms. And we have, we have developed a series of ready-made messages that you will find in the toolkit based on the campaign uh, key messages and pillars. And uh, we hope that you will find uh, messages there resonating with your own organizational uh, focus and your own uh, national priorities. Um, as, I, as I said, on the social media hub, we will really try um, to um, provide you with also localized content. So we would be happy to work with you as well to develop uh, those more localized messages that we can then upload on the social media hub for more regional focused messages. Here you can see a series of visuals that we've designed. Um, those can be used either on your social media platform to make your publication more visual and more likely to be shared, but also on your own website to illustrate some of um, your key messages. Um, if you would like to add your logo to those uh, design images, you can also uh, get in touch with us and we would be happy to work uh, with you or share the design files with you uh, to make it as, as, as as more, sorry, as adaptable as possible for you to use. And just to give you an idea, so we launched the campaign three weeks ago, and um, we really, we, we are going to, um, to really push to elevate the conversation around treatment for all using the official hashtag treatment for all. And there have, has been already 100 53 tweets sent out, reaching out more over 300,000 people already. So in three weeks, it's quite good. And uh, you can see here some examples of people already starting to get involved um, and engage with the campaign. We really encourage you to uh, follow UICC on Twitter, on Facebook, and on LinkedIn, as we are uh, really going to talk more and more about the campaign in the coming uh, months uh, on those platforms. Great, thank you so much, Natalie. So as a quick recap of these tools, oops, uh, 
launched on World Cancer Day. Um, ways that you can join in the, in the initiative and get involved right away um, are to, to go to uicc.org slash treatment for all and look at our tools, read more about treatment for all, download the one pager, share it with friends. And to find more uh, uh, about the campaign um, and what it can mean in your country by both viewing the Promoting Greater Equity World Map and by interacting with our Global Cancer Commitments Navigator tool. And again, as I've said earlier, and I believe we all, we all uh, express it here, we really want to work with you to make treatment for all possible. So in addition to raising awareness and amplifying these messages by using the social media hub um, and, and the pertaining toolkit and um, visuals, we also really, really want to hear from you if you're engaging with the tools, if you're interested in joining an advisory group or working group, and if you're already doing work that helps to advance improvements in data early detection, treatment, and care for cancer. So um, again, we can open the floor now for any questions, if there are any, but we're, we're really looking forward to seeing what we can accomplish together um, between now and 2025 and how Treatment for All can be a vehicle to hopefully help um, us achieve this and reach these, this finish line, well, but we won't call it that, uh, for, for 2025. The conference has been unmuted. So are there any um, questions at this time? Um, Natalie, maybe I can ask you a question while uh, people are gathering their thoughts. It came up the, in this morning's webinar around translations. Uh, can, you, can you explain how we, we will be looking to translate the, the toolkit? Well, um, as we know, our membership and the people that we want to get engaged in this campaign are coming from all part of the world, so it's true that translation is a key uh, factor of success for this campaign. Um, we will be working on translating the, um, the materials as we did for Work and Today, for example, and um, the way it works, it successfully works, is when we collaborate with our uh, members and really get their insights on the translation. So we would be happy uh, to hear from you if you need um, those, the materials that we've presented already today in specific languages and get in touch with, uh, with us so that we can work on, um, on prioritize the languages that are the most needed for now. But we will be working on that and provide them and make them uh, accessible as soon as um, available on the social media hub and on our website. Right, so what you're saying is if someone's interested in using these materials to let us know quickly what language um, is important for them and also to help, help get them, to get these messages as accurate in that language as possible so you can use them. Um, any more questions uh, from people on the webinar? Well, I recognize there was a lot of information in one hour, so please feel free to reach out to us um, per email or if you, if you know one of us directly, we're happy to have a call with you. Um, but we do look forward to hearing from you, um, either as a, you know, an expert contributor to one of the advisory groups or to um, give your views on the materials or contribute to news stories on the map. Um, or on uh, with the with the navigator. So thank you very much for joining the webinar. Mm -hmm. um, anything to add, Michaela? We will make sure that the recording is available in the coming days. And um, we wish you a happy afternoon, or if it's morning wherever you are, a good morning. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you.